If you're planning a cruise now or you have in the past, you absolutely know there is some bad cruise advice out there, whether it's in Facebook groups or maybe you speak to your great aunt who cruised a decade ago, there is definitely some cruise advice you should ignore. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, when it comes to cruise advice, it isn't exactly one size fits all. So while people have really good intention with cruise tips, there are some things that I see out there, whether it's in Facebook groups or elsewhere, that really is probably outdated information or just completely un true. Now in this video, I'm going to share with you the 10 things that I think is really just cruise advice you should ignore or at least take with a grain of salt. However, before I get started, I wanted to mention two things. Firstly, if you disagree with me, that's absolutely okay. Like I mentioned, cruise advice is not one size fits all. So let me know, please, in the comments. And secondly, if you do like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give the video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Okay, let's get started. Okay, the first one, I'm gonna start off with a big one. And this advice honestly is shared so often that I think a lot of people think it's true, but I don't. And it's that if you are young, you should be sailing with Carnival. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with Carnival. Carnival has so many fun things about it. It's a great value cruise line for people of any age. And there are definitely so many fun things that if you are young and active, Carnival is a great cruise line to sail with. However, we're all different and we all have different interests. And so I think when you do choose a cruise line, you have to choose a cruise line and ship based on how you like to vacation and not your age. There are younger people that might prefer a more relaxing type of cruise ship experience. They may be much more comfortable on a celebrity cruise or even a Holland America cruise. So I really think when you are booking a cruise, no matter your age, look at the experience that you'll have on board and see what suits you best. Number two, you do not have to worry about being seasick. And honestly, this is just not very good advice. Yes, cruise ships are quite big nowadays. They also have stabilizers, so the technology is really there. And for somebody that might have cruised even in the 1980s or the early 90s, things are really quite different. So on the most part, you should be fine. However, there are definitely some areas that you're going to be sailing in some cases that are going to have rougher seas. And oftentimes it's that wind as well. And while some people say that they never get seasick, I have heard from many people, and I've seen this on cruise ships, that do get a little bit of motion sickness. It's so much easier to spend between five and maybe $20 on having some things with you in case you do get seasick, just in case again, and be prepared then to have nothing with you and think that you are the only one because everybody told you you were never going to get seasick on a cruise. Number three, book a cruise last minute because you will get the absolute best deal. This honestly has been kind of bad advice for a few years. Most of the time, if you book early, you're not only going to get the better price on your cruise, but you're gonna get the best cabin, you're gonna get the best perks. It really is just overall, there's probably no downside to booking early. Now I have to say, these times are a little bit different and there have been some challenges. So if that's why you're waiting on booking, that's absolutely okay. But in terms of price, I can tell you even from cruises that I have booked, even if I've had to cancel a couple of them, that by booking early, they definitely were less expensive. Now the people, to be fair, that I usually hear giving this advice to say book last minute are actually people who book last minute for all-inclusive vacations. Now this might be true, I'm not sure all the time, but this might be true for all-inclusive vacations, but it definitely is not true for cruises. Number four, that you do not need travel insurance right now with COVID. Now, hear me out. This is because what I have been hearing lately, and I've seen this shared often in Facebook groups, is that because now cruise lines are covering COVID, should you get COVID on a cruise ship, should you need to cancel last minute if you do get COVID and you cannot go on the cruise, that you don't need travel insurance. And honestly, this couldn't be further from the truth. And in the fine print, cruise lines do point that out. If you have something else happen to you, if you break a leg, God forbid, on the cruise ship, if you have a medical emergency, if you have something happen to you in a cruise port, that is all not covered by any of the coverage that cruise lines will have because of COVID. And and even because of COVID, there is some fine print to that too that you do wanna be aware of. So definitely travel insurance was always something important 
for cruising and traveling and it remains so. Number five, cruise off season. Now there are some cases that I actually think that you should consider cruising off season. It definitely is a really great way to save money. So if you can book at the beginning of the season or at the end of the season, this can be something really good. But I do think it's something that you have to watch out for and just be prepared for. There are some areas where the beginning of the season and the end of the season are actually kind of well known for having inclement weather. If this is something that's going to bother you, you may miss cruise ports. Then even if you save perhaps 20 or even 30% on the cost of the cruise, it may not be worth it for you to book off season. Number seven, ignore almost all cruise ship cabin advice. Now this might seem a little bit strange because I make videos about cruise tips and cruise advice including cruise cabins and do other people. And I think all of those videos are really great because that is research. However, what you don't wanna do is listen to other people's opinions about it because maybe for somebody, if they were in an inside cabin, it would feel like a closet. Maybe it would feel like it's not even worth cruising if you can only be in an inside cabin. I've definitely seen people say, if you can't afford to have a balcony, you shouldn't cruise at all. And I absolutely completely disagree. But if you know that for you, you really would love a balcony cabin, then that's definitely something that you should take. Whether or not somebody else says you're only in your cabin to sleep, you may know that you'll really get a lot out of a balcony cabin or an ocean view cabin or a suite. So do your research on cruise cabins, but in the end, ignore all advice and make your own decision. Now, please let me know what you think so far. I get a little bit passionate about that one because I just think we cannot spend money from somebody else's wallet. And I know that everybody has the right, no matter what type of cabin that they are in, to cruise, to travel, and to enjoy that vacation time, either on their own or with the people that they love. Number eight, never book cruise line excursions. And this is definitely some advice I see given out often and I completely disagree. While there are some cons and some pros of booking cruise line excursions, I do think that everybody has to weigh them. Now, some of the cons to be fair of booking cruise line excursions are that the price is usually a bit higher. It could be anywhere from 20 to even 50% higher than if you would do that on your own. And the other con is that you are on while well, the cruise line schedule or the tourist schedule rather than when you do it on your own. So if you want to do that on your own if you want to visit on your own definitely do so if you can do it but there are some places where it's so much easier to do the cruise line excursion and I don't think we can always put a price on that sometimes it's organized for you that makes it easier at the same time if it is especially one of those long day excursions maybe it's six or eight hours one of the benefits of having a cruise line excursion is that that excursion is going to wait for you to go back to the cruise ship. If you ask probably anybody who has missed their cruise ship and has had to stay in a cruise port and find a way to fly home, they probably would give anything to just book that cruise line excursion. Number nine, pack carry-on only. Now, if you do pack carry-on only, or if you pack very light for a cruise, that is something really good as long as it works for you. However, for those people who, well, overpack a little bit or just like to be prepared, like me, don't feel guilty about it. It is absolutely fine. Even if you have to pay for a checked bag, that is not the worst sin in the world. Go on your cruise, have all the outfits that you need or that you want. Make sure you have all the toiletries that you want. Make sure you have all the essentials that you need for shore excursions. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that and you don't have to feel guilty because you're not packing carry on only. Number 10, and this is something really important, it is that if you book Cruise Line Air, you do not need to fly in one day early to your embarkation port. Now, this I think is well-meaning advice, but it is bad cruise advice. So just something to mention is when you do book Cruise Line Air, this is a good thing, and they do usually have a guarantee to get you to the cruise ship or to get you to the next port of call where you can embark your cruise ship. So sometimes people book uh, their flights on the same day as their cruise with a cruise line thinking that great, the cruise ship will wait for me. That is not actually what happens most of the time. So most of the time, if you are very late, it's unfortunate, things can happen on flights. The cruise ships do not control the flights. They don't control the weather, all of those different things that can happen. 
and the cruise ship will actually leave. Now, if they do have to fly you to the next port, they will assist you uh, with that, but you may end up getting flown out maybe to St. Thomas, uh, maybe to Jamaica, and that is just not going to be a great start to your cruise. We've actually met people on past cruises that this has happened and they've said never again would they ever do it. It's absolutely not worth it. And really, it really does affect your peace of mind. Even if you've booked with Cruise Line Air, make sure that you do arrive the day before. You will not regret it. Now, I know that cruise advice is subjective, so please let me know down in the comments below what you agree, don't agree, that is completely fine. And even if there are some other pieces of like bad cruise advice that people should ignore, please share that. Give us a warning down in the comments below. Now, speaking of cruise advice, I am gonna leave a video right after this one all about what to pack and what you can leave at home for your cruise. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.